The ultimate goal in the NBA is to contribute as much as you can to help your team win a championship, and the team that accomplishes this achieves the highest honor in the league, but along the way players are also battling it out for some individual glory by way of the awards that are given out at the end of every season. With the regular season being less than a week away from beginning, now is the perfect time to take a look at the landscape for each award and make some predictions, so that's exactly what I'll be doing today. I'll be going through the 6th man of the year, most improved player, rookie of the year, defensive player of the year, and of course the MVP award, and I'll be picking who I believe will win it this season, while also briefly acknowledging two honorable mentions for each category that I think will be in the running for it as well. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first award I'll be predicting today is the 6th Man of the Year award, and the player that I believe will be taking it home in 2023 is Jordan Poole of the Golden State Warriors. Poole had a major coming out party last season, emerging as a serious scoring threat that could put pressure on opposing defenses as he came off the bench in about two-thirds of his appearances last year, and still averaged nearly 19 points per game. Poole's craftiness with the ball in his hands, along with his ability to make tough shots look easy on occasion is becoming a weapon that the Warriors are increasingly relying upon, and with Klay Thompson back ready to be the team's starting shooting guard full-time again, Poole's role as the sixth man should get even more recognition from the get-go. I genuinely believe Poole could score over 20 points per game this year while coming off of the bench, which is the number that last year's winner Tyler Hero hit to win the award, and if he does, he'll definitely be the leader in the clubhouse while the Warriors continue to succeed as a team. Now for the two runner-ups for this award, I think Malcolm Brogdon and Bones Highland will be in the running right behind Jordan Poole. Tyler Hero may seem like an odd omission here, but from what I've seen there's actually a chance that Hero could end up as the team's starting shooting guard in Miami, whether it be on opening night or maybe they make the switch sometime down the line, so he might not even be a sixth man anymore to choose. Brogdon got acquired by the Celtics this offseason, and as long as he stays healthy, his balanced production will be a nice bonus to have off the bench. Bones Highland is my sleeper pick for this award, because after a strong rookie season in Denver last year, the Nuggets traded away two of their other guard options in order to free up a bigger role for Highland, which means that they trust him with his shooting ability and playmaking talent. I think he is a prime candidate to emerge. The next award is the Most Improved Player Award, and my pick to win it this season is Jalen Brunson of the New York Knicks. Brunson is carrying so much positive momentum going into this new season, and now that he's in a role where he'll actually be the primary ball handler, I expect him to absolutely thrive. He's a player that has improved in each of his first four seasons in the league while in Dallas, playing alongside Luka Doncic, and Luka, as we all know, is a pretty ball-dominant player. When he's on the court, the offense pretty much exclusively ran through him, so the fact that Brunson was there as a highly efficient secondary scoring option was very key to their success. When Luka Doncic missed a few games in the first round of the playoffs, Brunson stepped up and averaged 28 points per game in their series against the Jazz, including a 41-point performance in there, and now that he's out of Luka's shadow in the Big Apple, we may be in for more explosive nights like that one. As for the two runner-ups for this award, I believe Tyrese Maxey and Talon Horton Tucker will be right behind him for it. Maxey is a player that I think is also about to explode onto the scene even more than he did last season, and he's been looking like he's a much improved scoring threat during the preseason so far. The Sixers still run their offense through Joel Embiid, but now that they have James Harden full-time in their point guard role facilitating things, that means Maxey can focus more on being a lethal three-level score. Horton Tucker is a long shot for the award, I realize, but the award is for guys that will improve a lot, so you have to look at players that are in a position to do so. And since Horton Tucker is no longer on the Lakers, and is now on a Jazz team with lower expectations, where he'll be playing more minutes more likely, I think he could start producing at a higher level than we've seen from him to this point. The next award up is the Rookie of the Year award, and the player I believe will win it this season is Jabari Smith Jr. of the Houston Rockets. 
Jabari Smith Jr. was the player most expected to be selected first overall on draft night, but when the Magic ended up choosing Paolo Banquero to the surprise of many, Smith seemingly became an afterthought, which kind of baffled me. Smith did have an inconsistent summer league showing, which probably contributed a bit to it, but historically, countless great players have had iffy showings in the summer league, so that's not something that I'm going to overreact to, and in the preseason, Smith came out and lit it up, dropping 21 points in 24 minutes in his only showing before suffering a minor injury, so that's not something I'm concerned about either, but he also knocked down five threes and played some impressive defense in that game that he did play. What made Smith an elite prospect this year was his two-way play as a potentially great defender that can also shoot the ball well and on a Rockets team where he's surrounded by scoring talent, I think his skill set will work nicely as the glue to hold everything together. Now, as for the two runner-ups, my picks here are Paolo Banquero and Jaden Ivey. Paolo is a lot of people's picks to win this award for good reason, as he's shown off a tantalizing ability to score the ball for a player at his size that uses his strength to his advantage. It's going to be a very tight race between the two at the top, and I don't have a problem with the people picking him over Jabari, but I slightly prefer the guy who will be getting it done on both ends of the floor. Ivey should also be in the running as a rookie, who will be in the Pistons' starting lineup from day one, and his blistering speed and aggression around the basket could pose some problems immediately. The next award up is the Defensive Player of the Year award, and my pick to win it this year is Bam Adebayo of the Miami Heat. Bam's ascension as an elite defensive talent has been happening so quickly, and if I'm being honest, he hasn't gotten the amount of respect yet that he probably deserves for his work on that end of the floor. Defensive Player of the Year, historically, is an award that typically doesn't get given to a player until they prove themselves for at least a few seasons. So with Adebayo now being the most versatile defender in the league for an extended period of time, it's his turn to receive his flowers for it. No big man can defend the perimeter as well as Adebayo does, and his ability to switch out onto smaller and quicker players and lock them down, while also serving as the team's rim protector inside, is something that plays a huge part in the Miami Heat's top 5 defense that should once again rank in that range this year. As for the runner-ups here, the players that I think will be right behind him are Rudy Gobert and Robert Williams. Gobert is an easy choice because he's in the running pretty much every year for this award, and now in Minnesota, he's embracing a new challenge that people will be monitoring. Williams, though, is a player that really impressed last season, and if I'm being honest, I thought he was a better candidate for this award than his teammate Marcus Smart was, and Smart ended up winning the award, but Williams got injured near the end of the season, so that probably killed his momentum. Williams' work protecting the rim is up there with the very best of them, and as long as he stays healthy, he'll be in for an all-defensive nomination. And finally, we've made it to the Most Valuable Player Award, and my pick to win it in 2023 is Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid has been the runner-up in each of the last two seasons, and both years he finished second to Nikola Jokic of the Nuggets. It has been heavily debated between those two players each season, but with Jokic having won it two seasons in a row now, voter fatigue could be in play, and it's a very real thing, and players who are consistently in the running for Embiid MVP do typically get rewarded for it over time. Think back to when James Harden was consistently coming in second place for the award before finally winning it in 2018. 2018 was not Harden's best season by any means, but he got the award he ultimately deserved for his consistent dominance. Embiid is now in the same boat, and in addition to that, the Sixers should be winning more games than they did last season with all of the improvements that were made around Embiid. The Sixers' offense still revolves around him, but now he has James Harden contributing for a full season, Tyrese Maxey is about to emerge even further, PJ Tucker is here now to do the little things to help win, and several new bench players give them depth. Now, as for the runner-ups for the MVP, of course Nikola Jokic will still be in the running, along with Giannis Antetokounmpo. I know these are somewhat boring picks because Giannis and Jokic have been winning the award over the last four years, while Embiid has been the runner-up a lot of those times, but there really isn't anything that makes me think these guys are going anywhere or are going to slow down and get passed up. Luka Doncic is the only other player I believe could change this, but there's no guarantee that the Mavericks will be as good as they were last season, which could hurt 
hurt his case, while the Nuggets and Sixers are expected to improve and the Bucks stay as top contenders. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who you think will be taking home each award this season. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.